All right, so here we are. I'm sitting here with uh, none other than newly crowned. Well, I suppose you haven't officially been crowned yet. That'll happen here in a couple hours. But uh, 250 MX Outdoor Champion Dean Wilson. Dean, how you doing? Yeah, doing well. Uh, we're just uh, chilling out on Sunday. We got the banquet tonight, so uh, yeah, just hanging out. Um, got my fancy shirt on. Yeah, I was gonna say how often uh, you got a collar on. He's wearing a collar. I bet you don't wear a collar very often. No, not really. Um, but yeah, gotta gotta dress to impress a little bit. So. Uh, yeah, we're heading out there in a little bit, so should be cool to uh, receive my uh, award. All right, well, let's kind of back it up a little bit here. Let's talk about the season uh, just wrapped up. Last race was yesterday. You wrapped it up at Southwick, or Steel City, and uh, so you didn't have to go out there. I kind of was thinking, some people were saying how you might have had uh, a lot of pressure on you for this race to win. I'm like, well, I thought maybe you didn't have pressure. How did you take it? Did you feel pressure or relief and no pressure? Uh, no pressure for me. I mean... Uh I mean, what, what does pressure do for you, you know? I don't think it really does anything, I mean, but maybe make your ride even worse, you know? Some people ride better under pressure, but you just go out there and uh, ride your best and and just ride your heart out, then that's that's the best you can do. And, you know, if your results aren't what you want them to be, then um, so be it. That's just how it's going to be. something about it, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I mean, every single race, I just went and gave it my best, and that's all you can do. All right, well, cool. Let's... Uh if you guys can see in the back uh, backdrop here, we're sitting at your house here. Where are we in Menifee? Is that where we are? Menifee, yes. We're in Menifee. Uh, is this a new house to you guys? Uh, tell us a bit about what's going on here. Yeah, uh, we moved here about a year and a half ago now, I think. Um, it's really nice. I like it. Central for all the tracks. And um, where our house is, it's a little bit away from um, like lots of traffic, so it's nice. Um, I really like it. It's, uh, I don't know, I, the, the house is comfy, so it's good. Yeah, so now, okay, so you're heading over to the the banquet tonight. I'm not going to go. I, I don't have a collared shirt, so I can't uh, I can't go. Plus, they didn't invite me. But uh, but actually, I am staying here tonight, so thank you very much to you guys. Your parents have been always really good to me and stuff like that. But uh, let's kind of look back at the season. Are you happy with the way it all went? And I'm, he picked that seat, by the way, so he's looking into the sun. I, I asked him which seat he wanted. But, uh, Sorry. <laughs> but uh, sum up your season there. Was it good? Like any, you know, the high points of it? Uh, how, did, how did everything go down for you? Oh, yeah, I mean, my season was brilliant. I mean, uh <sighs> to win the championship was obviously like a dream come true and um, the first three rounds were pretty good uh, I had the overall in my hands the first three races and then I crashed and the, so uh, you know I was still on the box each race and then the fourth round is the, the kind of like the low point of my series where uh, the first moto at high point I got second and the second moto at high point I uh, um, uh, a whole shot, you know, it was muddy, so I was like, you know, your whole shot mud race, you're usually looking pretty good, and um, I uh, crashed first lap, so that so that wasn't very good, and so I went from first to last, and then um, came through the pack and ended up eighth, so went two eight for fourth, and that was uh, my worst most score of the season, but mm -hmm. it was one of those things where like I was just so close from getting an overall, you know, but had a lot of those, but yeah, yeah I mean. Uh, if a uh, 2-8 is your worst in the season, I think you're doing okay. Yeah. Okay, so now, like like we mentioned here, you're heading off to the banquet tonight. Uh, it's Sunday here. Uh, Sunday night at the banquet. Now, tomorrow you're taking off because next weekend is the big uh, motocross of nations in France. What's uh, what's going on there? Yeah, uh, tomorrow we're taking off for MX the Nations, so it's a jam-packed, wide-open weekend. I mean, we uh, went out. Uh, I mean, we, we raced yesterday, then we went out last night, did a little bit of celebrating, had a good time. But then, like, this morning, you know, had to start packing and getting all my stuff ready, and I'm just hoping I didn't forget half the stuff. And, uh, yeah, so we, we hop on a plane tomorrow morning, and then we fly to Salt Lake City, then from Salt Lake City to Paris, then from Paris to Bordeaux. Mm -hmm. And then when you land in Bordeaux, you still have a three-hour drive. Man, it's quite the travel, but, um, well... Hopefully get there eventually. Yeah, now what do you uh, what do you know about the track there? Do you know much about it? Not really. I mean, um, I heard it's kind of rocky, which sucks for me because I'm not really seeing anything. But I'm almost guaranteed to get a bad start because you know I'm racing with all the 450s, mm -hmm. and uh, I don't want to be spinning at rocks all day. But yeah, I heard it's a little bit rocky, and uh, I also heard that um, the ruts get really hard, almost like Steel City, how they they kind of you know get really really hard like concrete. So. Uh, that's all I've heard so far, but yeah, we'll just see how it, how it is when I get there. Yeah, now, now you're riding for uh, Team Great Britain, and uh, tell us about uh, Tommy. Who's, who's, who are the three guys on your team? Yeah, the three guys on my team is uh, me, 
I'll be on the 250. Um, Tommy Serra will be on the 450, and Brad Anderson will be on the 450. So, um, yeah, it should be good. All right, well, that's cool. So we'll be we'll be watching for that. Unfortunately, uh, our my country, Canada, doesn't have a team, but uh, uh, we'll be there next year for sure. So uh, now moving forward, let's talk about, actually, let's talk about tonight. We just actually were watching yesterday's race on TV there, and there's a little incident going on between you and Blake Baggett. Uh, what are you going to go up and, would you go up and talk to him tonight at all, or what? Uh, how's tonight going to go that way? Oh, man, I'm going, we're, we're going to get the boxing gloves on. No, I'm just totally joking. Um, yeah, it's kind of unfortunate. You know, we, we all make it this far in the series you know we all get along this far get to the 12th round and then we have a blowout so that kind of sucked but um um mitch told me to keep my mouth zipped so my mouth is zipped <laughs> <laughs> all right it's probably a good policy something i should probably learn but uh so now going forward uh so you're gonna head off to to, to france you come back and then what's uh, what are your off-season plans there's not much of an off-season but what are your plans man it's not much of an off-season for me this year um so i race france and then I come back and then I hop on a 450 and then I start uh, getting ready for the um, Monster Cup. And so I think that's that's October 15th. So I'll start getting ready for that. Um, probably ride the Cali track and stuff like that. Maybe some outdoors as well, just because like it's supposed to be a mixture. I'm really not even know what to expect going into this race. But um, so yeah, do that. And then from Vegas, I'm gonna fly back to Scotland and just chill there for a month and relax and. Uh, kind of get chubby. <laughs> All right. Did you say get you just chubby. said get chubby? Okay. Get chubby. All right. No, Never I don't want to get chubby. I wish I could just eat whatever I wanted and not get chubby, but I'm just making sure you didn't say get a Okay. Uh, uh, okay. Well, I have that too. Get get chubby and get chubby. Of course. <laughs> All right, let's talk about hey uh uh you know you know Colton Fasciotti, obviously. So what do you think about him coming down the last three races and uh, how do you think that all went? Yeah, I mean, uh, he was uh doing good yesterday and I mean Hangtown or uh not Hangtown. Uh, Southwick. First moto was real good for him. I was pumped for him. And then second one, I'm not sure what happened. I knew he, he didn't finish it because, I mean, he wouldn't finish 36th. Right. He wouldn't go 536. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, then um, I talked to him at Steel City and he was kind of pissed because he's wearing brand new boots in the morning and I know how that is because I'm not one of those guys that can just throw on a pair of boots and race. It's really uncomfortable and, and awkward. So, he he was kind of like all like all like didn't feel that good and uh, I think he, how did he end up like 12th or something? Yeah, 12th of the world. Okay, overall. yeah, and then so then this weekend he was doing good the first mall he got some TV time because I was watching it and then I think he was in fifth and then he moved back to like maybe seventh. Oh, yeah. at this one? Uh, yeah, yeah, I don't even. I don't even know, but he was doing good. He he, 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 he did good the first mall, and then the second mall he I seen him getting carted off and. Asked him if he's okay, and he says he's okay. So I don't know what's going on, but hopefully he's all right. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah, I spoke to him as well. He's going to go get checked out, a couple more things that they weren't able to X-ray or whatever at uh, right on the track. But uh, you guys are ready. We're kind of kind of keeping you back here. You guys are trying to get to the banquet. So uh, just hey, should you throw out some uh, sponsor thanks? Yeah, just um, I just want to thank everybody that's supporting me. I mean, um, I know I'm a, I feel like my fan base is shrinking in Canada, but <laughs> hey, everybody that's just supporting me, like. Throughout my career, that's just some of the dummies you hear on the forum. That's it's not that's I, not the majority. I stopped reading it. I stopped reading it. The MX forum. Don't I, stop reading it. Come on. No, just, just I used to go on it now and again and check out, but that's okay. But um, just everybody that supported me and um, got me to where I am today. I mean, uh, it it means a lot to me. Um, you know, it's all my sponsors. Um, my mechanic Paul, he's done a great job on my bike all season, and my mom and dad, of course, I wouldn't be where I am if it wasn't for them. And um. <sighs> My trainer Sam, he's helped me out quite a lot. Um, though obviously Mitch, I would, I don't think I'd be where I am today if it wasn't for him. His bikes are just phenomenal. Um, the whole team, Monster Energy, Pro Circuit, Kawasaki, Thor, Dunlop, Parts Unlimited, Scott, Vans, Volcom. <laughs> um, Toyota Vescondido, they hooked me up with a sec Tundra. So I just get to drive now. I heard, uh, I heard you're driving out like a bit of a maniac. Yeah, I'm kind of a maniac driver, but that's just how we drive down in California. If, if you don't drive like a maniac, you're not going to get anywhere fast. So you kind of just have to turn into one of them. Yeah, well, it's true. Me and Dave McGregor just drove Pete back to the airport in San Diego this morning. We're doing 80 miles an hour. And, and it's we, Yeah, we're getting, well, no, that's a hey, message to people in California. Move right, except to pass. What's with all this left lane slow driving and stuff? Yeah, I know. They, like, it's like anything goes. People are just swerving. And like, yeah, they don't know what they're doing half the time. It's like, I, I call them 
I, I call California drivers asshole drivers because <laughs> they would rather when your, your fan base in California oh, is shrinking now too. Well, I'm just saying that it's honest opinion. When you try to go into a lane and you you turn your blinker on. The person just gasses it and makes sure you doesn't get in. I almost got in a fight with a woman on the highway yesterday with that exact same thing. Yeah, that's what happens. You, when the lane, make it the lane's ending and it's a huge concrete barrier <laughs> and you're trying to get over, well, nobody's going to let you by. No. And then they, they would rather see you smash into a concrete barrier and die than just let you in. Yeah, road so, rage happens fast oh here. Oh my God. So that's why you got to be sneaky in California. You just, you don't even use your flasher. You just, just yeah. get in the lane. A lot of people carry guns, though, as far as I was concerned. I think they do. A lot of people do carry guns and knives. You have to be really careful. But <laughs> when you got guns like these... That's true. You're carrying some you're, guns, too. That's you don't right. have to worry about anything. That's true. That's true. Just flex it. And... All right. Well, hey, we'll let you get going. Thank you very much for chatting with us. And thank no your parents and everybody for the hospitality here. And uh, good luck next weekend. And we'll talk to you soon. Thank you, everybody. Thanks.